Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just greeting you on this Resurrection um, Sunday after evening, I guess. Um, and I kind of wanted to uh, share some things with you um, and what I got out of the Sunday School. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of call this the Sunday School Wrap-Up. Uh, a lot of churches today, you know, they really didn't have a Sunday School. Uh, they had early church, which is what happened in our church. Um, and so um, I kind of just wanted to share just a little bit about um, of what I got out of the uh, Sunday School lesson. Um, the title of the Sunday School lesson is called, <clears throat> Called to Believe the Resurrection. So we're all called to believe in the resurrection. And so um, that was part of the, the lesson that I got today. Um, and so, of course, you know how I do. Uh, let me pray first. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would just touch each and every listener, Lord God. And Lord God, we're asking that you would just, uh, if there's anything that they need, Father, that you would touch their hearts and their minds. Lord, we love them and appreciate them. Lord God, we thank you for all the ones that we have that are our are, are members or subscribers, Lord God. But most of all, we thank you for the believers, Lord God, that need just a little extra boost in the word each and every day. We love you, God. We're asking that you would heal those that need healing, comfort those that need comforts that have lost loved ones. Father God, but most of all, that your word would show forth strong throughout each and every one of us. That we would be more and more spiritual, more and more like you, uh, and less and, like, less and less of ourselves showing forth. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let's get right into the lesson. <clears throat> Called to believe the resurrection. So, the scripture is coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 15. And I'm going to try my best not to get... Uh, crazy because you know how I get when I am reading or talking about the word of God I can kind of get a little crunk but I'm going to try to uh, make these a little bit shorter uh, so that you'll have time to kind of uh, you know listen um, to you know what God has given me so <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to point out is if we don't believe in the fact that Jesus rose from the dead um, what is the point uh, being morally uh, good does not uh, get us into heaven, and it doesn't cut the mustard, I said. Um, and we have not, uh, we're not Jewish, so technically, we really don't have the right to eternal life if you go by the law. Uh, uh, if the premise is to go back to the law, how many of us actually could follow it to the degree to receive eternal life? Have we sacrificed a lamb or could we sacrifice a lamb on an annual basis um, which, or, or have a scapegoat which would return, <laughs> which in a year we'd have to do it again? Uh, can we follow the over 3,000 laws that was created from the Ten Commandments uh, and can we follow them all? Are we, we are called to believe the resurrection because without it, we don't stand a chance. If the sacrifice was unnecessary, why did he do it? For show, for fame, or was it just foolishness? When he sacrificed, he sacrificed because he knew what he was doing. He knew that we needed a savior uh, to redeem us back unto himself. And so it was not foolish and it was, it was needed. It was necessary. And blood, sac blood for blood, blood sacrifices was required. And Jesus gave it all, paid it all um, for our sins. So um, the first part of the verse is in verse 1. It talks about the Sabbath. That um, It was the Sabbath. Some people believe it's the Sabbath. It's on a Sunday. Some people believe that it's on a Saturday. It really doesn't matter. This is a day of rest for the Lord. Um, so I want to talk about how, uh, look at the commitment after death of the women that came to you know, uh, put the spices or on, the, on the body. Mary Magdalene, who was delivered from a demonic uh, oppression, and then the other Mary. And they were uh, going down, committed to, um, you know, put the spices so that the body would be preserved and the body wouldn't stink on Jesus. I mean, they went, uh, 
you know, Sunday, let's just say they went on Sunday, Sunday morning uh, to, to make sure that body, Jesus's body was ready, uh, that his body was, uh, you know, prepared um, for, for um, while it was in the tomb. And so I just want to talk about just for a moment, look how committed they were. Not committed to religion, not committed uh, to service, uh, to committed to service, but not a service. And so I just wanted to point out they were really committed to Jesus. And then the second verse, it talks about a, a great earthquake coming. Of course, it's the second earthquake because we know that at his death, there was an earthquake. And we know that the train uh, ripped in the temple uh, from the bottom uh, from the top to the bottom. And so, which is a miracle feat by itself. And now we see again that even as he re was raised from the dead as it, at his resurre resurrection, there was another earthquake. And then it says that the stone was rolled away by an angel. And then the angel sat upon it as if the angel was waiting for someone to come because he knew that someone would come. And so um, isn't that amazing that the angel was sitting there waiting? But think about this for just a moment. What if no one came? What if no one came and knew that Jesus had been raised from the dead? What if no one came to the tomb? Well, we know, obviously, that Jesus did go uh, show itself to many, many people. I want to talk about uh, the, the, the rock itself. Uh, they said that it's like four to six feet in di diameter, and it was one foot thick. Now, according to uh, what I study, it was one to two tons like 2,000 to 4,000 pounds, and the angel rolled it away. He says scarcely two men could roll it away. But, I mean, the angel, I mean, that talks about, once again, the power of the divine, the angelic power that God gives us to get rid of situations and circumstances in our lives is what I got out of that. So in verse 3, it talks about the angel and its, its appearance, you know, how it was light, like lightning or bright. Um, and then, of course, I thought about heavenly characteristics uh, that they had an idea that this person was not from the earth. They weren't from around here, as you call it. And so, and it was so bright and so amazing that the soldiers passed out. Unless that's what I got out of that in verse 4. So as um, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came, the first thing he tells them is fear not. Because um, sometimes when we are in fear, we don't hear everything. And so he tells them first, basically, calm down. It's going to be okay. Jesus is not here. So he talks about Jesus' previous condition, that he wasn't here. Jesus that was crucified, he's not here. And so as he's calming the calming the uh, the this, uh, calming the believers down and letting them know, listen, I'm going to tell you something. And so in verse six, he says that you were looking in the wrong place. He got up. Ooh, glory to God right there by himself. He got up. He got up. So he got up like he told you he would and everything looked bleak. Think about this. Jesus had already died, had been in uh, buried in the grave for at least three for three days. So we know that he went down. It says that he uh, they buried him in, on Friday and then early Sunday morning. As everybody hears the songs, um, that he got up. So from that time, from Friday to Sunday, you know they had doubt in their minds. You know they were wondering what happened. Uh, is this the? Am I? Should I still believe? Everything that I've been taught, everything that I've been done, it's because the way I thought things were going to go, they didn't go the way I thought they were going to go. Should they continue to believe? Their teacher had been gone. The teacher was gone. Jesus was gone. Everything that has been teaching us, now we have to live it out. Oh, my God. And then it says that he was, and then I got out of that, that he was hidden. He wasn't there. He wasn't available for them anymore. So it's like God is saying, check, check this out. Check it out for yourself. Look into the tomb and see that he's not here. And be a witness to the marvelous works of God's right, raising power, his resurrection power. And so he's not only telling them to, to look and be a witness and check it out for yourself, but then he tells them to go and tell others. 
Tell them that uh, we'll meet, Jesus will meet them where he told them he would. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, they had been waiting on Jesus for several days. Many, many days they had waited because we know that they had the Passover. Uh, there was uh, different types of feasts that had been going on. And so this was a time that they had just been waiting. And sometimes in the midst of our waiting, I have a friend that wrote a book, What Do I Do While I Wait? Um, uh, uh, First Lady Copeland, Christy Copeland. And what do I do while I wait? So, so sometimes we wonder in the midst of our waiting, uh, what do we do? Uh, do we doubt? Do we continue? Do we wait? What exactly am I supposed to do? You got to get a book so you can so you can find out what do you do while you're waiting. So they ran. They were so excited about the news that they ran so that they could be a witness. But notice that in verse eight, not only did they ran, but they still had some fear. They still had some doubt. Uh, they had joy also. But sometimes you have to do it afraid. Sometimes you have to have that healthy reverence of Christ and still continue to do it, even though it might not look the way you think it should look in the midst of it all. So on their journey, after the angel had sent them away, on their journey, they run into Jesus. And so Jesus tells them hell or all hell. And so he's greeting them and letting them know uh, that he is uh, greeting them from beyond the grave and that everything is going to be all right. All hell. Hello. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Whichever way you want to put it. And so in verse 10, he said he stops them and gives them confirmations on what has happened and reminds him that he would give them a personal visitation, um, that he'll be coming by to see about them. Isn't that amazing how God in his infinite wisdom and how Jesus was so personal that even in the midst of going through all that he went through, can you imagine him coming back from the dead and all of those things, how he may have been even tired or hungry or, or whatever the case may be, but he took time enough out of his busy schedule to come and see about them and to let them know that he is real and that everything that he said, it will come to pass and has come to pass. And so in verse 11, uh, then the guards, you know, think about this. Now the guards done woke up and so they, they realize, okay, okay. I seen this angel. We saw this angel and, and we looked in the, cause you know, they went back and looked in the tomb and they seen that Jesus body was gone. And he told them everything because I'm sure while they were passed out, they were hearing these voices about what the angel had told uh, Mary Magdalene and, and, and that he was going to visit and that he had risen and he wasn't here. And so they went back and told the authorities, the other authorities. Now look at the enemy right here. In verse 12, basically they paid him off and told him to lie. Who is, a, who is trying to pay you off? This is what God showed me. Who is trying to pay you off? Who is trying to silence you? Who is trying to silence the voice of God in you? Is it promotion? Is it social influence? Is it fear? Are you being paid off by fear? Is fear silencing you from telling the truth of God and witnessing to your fellow man that need Jesus just like you did? So verses 13 through 15, see, so we're almost done. The other things that he shared with me, um, so basically he told him to lie. And then, of course, I was like, why is it so, why was this so important? Because, one, I thought about, well, they had made a mistake. They killed the Messiah. So, of course, they're, you know, they want to admit that they killed the Messiah, uh, the, the um, ruler of the universe, the Savior. They don't want to admit that they made a mistake. So, that could be one reason why. And I'm just using my Holy Ghost mind to, to think about that. And the second one is because uh, the people, when they found out he was telling the truth, they knew there was going to be a revolution like no other revolution, as we still see even today, how just knowing and the knowledge of Jesus ra being raised from the dead, besides all of his great teachings of how to live for him, uh, this being raised from the dead, that he had the keys to of death and hell in his hand and how uh, he give, gave us power over death now. Isn't that just amazing? So they knew they were going to have swarms of mobs and people trying to follow him after once they found out that he 
uh, had really risen. And then the other one is politics. Uh, sometimes it just isn't um, everything. The Bible talks about everything being expedient, but uh, some things are 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 not expedient. I, I can't remember how the verse go now off the top of my head. Love, forgive me. But uh, anyway, basically, some things are proper, but not for this time. I'll paraphrase it. So and and so uh, it was political. They had just killed the Messiah. They had got the Romans to kill the Messiah. And so now it's kind of a political uh, eyesore, a political era, a strategic uh, era that they have made. If they don't try to silence these people, try to pay off the guards and, and have these rumors and lies going around, that Jesus really didn't die, that his disciples stole the body so that people could believe that he had risen from the dead. Now, we know that later on, and it doesn't talk about it in this verse, but we know there are 500 people that see, saw Jesus, even more than that. Uh, uh, but I know for sure of 500, because it talks about it in the scriptures in Mark, uh, that actually saw Jesus physically. Of course, his disciples saw him. James, James saw him. And then other scriptures, it talks about how Mary Magdalene saw them. We know that we saw that as, as well in the scripture, how it says that he stopped them and told them, as you run and tell the disciples, make sure you know, let them know that I'm coming to visit them. And so the other, uh, there's only three points I kind of want to remind you of. One, don't let anything silence the Jesus in you. I don't care what it is. Because at the end of the day, he is the one that's going to see you through. He is the one that's going to see you through. Secondly, sometimes we have to do things afraid. Or uh, uh, with a, the, not the uh, full understanding of what God is trying to do. As long as we know it's God, then we need to try to do that. Even if we can't understand. Because God never told us we would understand everything. He said he would send us a comforter. And that, that comforter would witness of me. But he didn't say we're going to have a full understanding of everything. Right? Y'all, If y'all agree with me, just let me know. And then the other thing is calm down. Now, why do I say that? Sometimes we get so excited about uh, the, uh, the things that are going around, going on in our lives, that we forget or we don't look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We don't remember all the things that he's already brought us through. So I'm just reminding you, calm down. Let Jesus talk to you. Let him comfort you. You don't have to always do it, you know, on your journey, on your way to doing whatever he's telling you to do. He's going to be there for you. And so in my summation, uh, the title of the lesson, once again, is called to believe the resurrection coming out of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 15. And I just want you to remind, just think about this resurrection morning. It's not about Easter eggs or this is the evening because I'm pretty sure you already went to church. It's not about the eggs. It's not even about the bunny. It's about Jesus Christ and how he handed over power to defeat the enemy, to every believer that will do just that, believe in him. God bless.